and then Madre Viera, esto se muere de nuevo. Ay, dale mis gracias, hermano. Para ganar hay que mirar al rival. Por eso a mí me gusta jugar con mala gente. Es gente como uno. It's not about white. It's not about black. It's about the police keep killing us. I feel embarrassed sometimes of my job. I'm supporting Black Lives Matter. But it's like, I support my mom. A mí me pueden decir lo que me quieran decir, pero yo nunca me detengo, ¿sabes? Eso es algo muy bien característico de los cubanos. Nosotros no paramos. Mi mamá me decía que llegaría la revolución. Desde entonces yo la esperaba con miedo y el pueblo con esperanza. Powerful enough for the journey, you must be powerful enough to return. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this live discussion and QA of Monkey Beach, directed by Loretta Todd. Presented in collaboration with the Smithsonian's National Museum of American Indian and the America's Film Festival, New York. I would like to gratefully acknowledge the native peoples on whose ancestral homelands we gather, as well as the diverse and vibrant native communities who reside here today. My name is Cindy Benitez and I am the film program manager at the NMEI and your moderator for this evening. I am joined here today with director Loretta Todd and actress Grace Dove. Welcome everyone and congratulations on an amazing film. Hi, hi, thank you so much, Cynthia, and to all the people at the festival and the, all the people at the NMAI. Thank you. Um, well, let's start with introductions first. Uh, Grace, if you'd like to go first. Sure, uh, hello, Wake. My name is Grace Dove, I'm Sekwatmuk. I'm from the unceded territory of Sekwatmukulu here in British Columbia. Um, my name is Grace and uh, my pronouns are she and her. Loretta? Hi, Tanse. Uh, nice to see all of you. I'm here on the unceded territories of the Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh people. Um, filming today in Vancouver for Coyote Science. And I actually am a uh, Cree and Métis from uh, the St. Paul de Métis and the original Red River and from what District First Nations and um, uh, other, from uh, um, uh, Turtle Mountain as well. Great. Um, okay, so Loretta, um, you've been working on this film for a while, according to my <laughs> research. And um, this is based on the wonderful Eden Robinson's book. What initially drew you to want to adapt this book to film and what were the challenges in that? Well, I actually came upon it, not directly myself. I was actually, um, was at an event and a filmmaker came up to me and said, you should option Eden Robinson's book because her writing is like your filmmaking. And I was, I knew about the book and one day I was gonna find the time to read it I hadn't thought about optioning. I had been trying to make feature films back in the day, and we've always kind of had come up against obstacles with, you know, you guys aren't ready yet for feature films. So, um, so, but I thought I'm going to do it. I'm going to find the book and read the book. And then I read the book and I said, yeah, this has to be a film. And interestingly enough, in the acknowledgements in the book, I had never met Eden. But in the book, she acknowledged me because she had used one of my films, Forbidden uh, mm. Thought Warriors for research. So I thought, oh, this must mean something that, that you know, I'm there, even though I had never met. Um, then I started the process of optioning. This was 15 years ago. 
So I had to basically um, go through the agents and all the optioning agreements. I had to, of course, make sure that Eden um, believed in me and believed in me taking her film forward. Um, and she said yes. And, and at one point even said I was the only person she thought could do this. So I was very honored that way. But that also put a huge responsibility on me because it meant I had to do this film like none other. So that's basically the journey. It's been a long journey. I, I, I started, I was also at one point working with the Mi'kmaq producer, uh, Jeff Baer. Um, we, we worked together for a while and then um, there was a, you know, a creative difference, but we parted amicably. And then I basically been moving ahead uh, as best I can, um, you know, ever since. Great, no, that's wonderful, <laughs> like by chance, right? You never know what's really gonna work out at the end. Um, the film is so beautifully shot and you could see the beautiful connection between the land and the water. And that's because you were able to film it actually in Kitima. Um For you and for the cast, uh, you Grace too, what were the benefits and even the challenges of working on such a remote set such as that? Um, oh, yeah. Go ahead, oh, Grace. I, I, yeah. I, uh, I, for me, I mean, I can't speak for obviously uh, Loretta and the crew. I'm sure there was more challenges because of that. But for me, it was everything. It was the best part about it. Um, it made it, it made my job easier because, you know, anytime you're, you're filming on where the, the story is from, when you're filming on that, that territory and honoring those people, the vibe is just completely different, right? We were with the Heisla people. We were in the community and the community supported us and lifted us up. So as an actor, that's the greatest gift that someone can give me is to, to put in that work and to put in that effort and make sure that I'm supported in that way. And and visiting um, and being there, you know, for over a month, it was my first time. And uh, I have a, actually a couple of friends that, that are from there. And it just added to the whole experience and gave us the magic that we needed. Yeah, it was, it was certainly, you know, uh, a challenge because that was always my dream from the beginning. You know, we, we uh, back in the day when I first started, we scouted locations in Vancouver. You know, there were beaches yeah. that could have been Monkey Beach. There were villages, indigenous villages that could have been, you know, Kitimat. But I had been to Kitimat. I had been to Monkey Beach. And I, there was just something that's about the magic of the area. And certainly the idea of a couple of things. One is the story you know, I wanted the story to be where it was born. And, you know, I know the convention is to find the place where it's cheapest and quickest and so on. But to me, I was always committed to screening it and, and making it in Kitimat. And that, that was a challenge because everybody would say, well, your budget would be less and you'd have more chance of doing it if you filmed it in and around Vancouver. So, you know, but I persisted. I persisted. And the other thing is I always felt, um, I always sort of believe in this idea of redistribution of wealth. So as mm. challenging as the budget was, to me, it was really important that what I could bring to the, to the village, um, to the community, I, I could by hiring as many people as I could from the village, you know, uh, the, the, all the men, and not all just men, uh, also the woman who had been, you know, fishing on that territory. Uh oh, you lost me. It's okay. Okay. so. Are we still alive? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So all the people who have been fishing on that territory for all those centuries, from since time, you know, from many, many time immemorial, they had an understanding of the water. They had an understanding of the weather. They knew about you know, the spirits that inhabit that land. So, you know, they brought a knowledge. And a lot of them hadn't been fishing because the commercial fishery has been down so long. So, you know, I was able to hire the boats and pay for their knowledge and expertise. So I really felt there was a redistribution of uh, wealth and reciprocity, um, you know, and hiring as many people as I could both from the village and the town, um, you know, I think really made a difference. And I, we still get emails, right, Grace? We, I still get, no, you know, no, people will come back, we love you. You know, um, everybody would go into the local uh, store and have their <laughs> frozen yogurt and, you know, she had a good shop in there. And so it, it, it was, a, yeah, it was a wonderful time. Oh, that's wonderful. Supporting the local community as well and, you know, getting to know them. That's that's always great, especially when you're making um, such a such a prolific film as this, because it's so different from any indigenous made film made by a woman led by an indigenous cast. And 
the cast itself, you basically have every top notch First Nation actor in your film Nathaniel Arcan, Adam Beach, Grace Dove, Glenn Gould. Uh, I mean, just to name a few. Um, and they all embody the characters so beautifully. How did you assemble like such a cast like that? Well, casting was, uh, you know, because I've been trying to make the film for a long time. So, you know, there was always people I had in mind. I always knew that I'd work with Nathaniel again. He and I kind of started off at the same time. And he was in one of my first documentaries, Forgotten Warriors. And, um, and you know, I always wanted to work with him again. And Adam, Adam Beach was somebody I knew I could get. Not to say he hasn't done amazing performances, but I knew I could get a great performance from him. Like, that was a goal for me as a director, to get the best performance I could from him. And then, of course, Grace just, you know, there's something about Lisa. She has to be, she has to be powerful, you know, and yet still on that, what I call the precipice of, of embracing her power. Mm -hmm. And I think Grace understands that. Grace has already embraced her power, embraced her medicine, but she's understood that journey. And that's a journey that Lisa's still on. And I think mm -hmm. that was really critical because I think that's a message for all Indigenous women, well, all Indigenous people, mm -hmm. that we have to embrace our medicine, that our medicine's within us. And I knew that each of those people who were on the film brought some knowledge of that. I mean, Tina Lehman, who played Mama O, I mean, she's uh, a great actor, but she's also, you know, she's dealt with the realities of, you know, her res. And every, every one of them have gone through, you know, so, a lot. And so in addition to the struggles and the, and the challenges and the triumphs of being an Indigenous actor, there is also the fact that they have been really important people contributing back to their communities. And so I knew they understood that idea of embracing medicine. No, that's wonderful. And I mean, Grace, you working, you know, with all this like great casting as well, and you could just tell that it was family, even in the film, like you could just tell that everybody was so connected again with the land, the water, and just, it just comes out in this film. And I mean, watching the character of Lisa and her emotional range was so beautifully done. I mean, it literally you, as a woman, as a woman of color, I think everybody could relate of the connective of coming back home and like how difficult that can be, especially with family. And for you, what was it about Lisa? How did you, I mean, you knew Loretta, but how, what made you want to take this character? And what was that experience like? Um, there was, yeah, there was no, not a moment of doubt that I, um, that I had because I, I knew this was going to be a pivotal moment in my career. Um, this was the moment I was waiting for. And, and in hindsight, looking back even because this is i think we're going on uh over two years now and i'm still like still processing and still understanding lisa in all these these weird ways like um in my own growth and my journey and what she went through and i think that's the beautiful part about it is there's so many layers and when this opportunity when loretta um offered me this opportunity it, i i knew i was like oh this is what I've been waiting for. Um, it's the opportunity to tell an Indigenous story um, that has been written by Indigenous women that, you know, has Indigenous cast, crew, and we are going to be on the land. And I think that's what the future of Indigenous cinema is. You know, I've played um, characters in big Hollywood films. I've been Native characters, but it's, there's always a little bit missing because it, we're not the ones telling those stories. Uh, and so for this, this is what I believe my purpose is and my future is, is to be a part of projects such as this. And, um, and especially for, for Lisa, I, I already had her inside me in a way. Um, you know, I had, I've had coaches say, Grace, that was great. That take was great or that audition was fine, but you're not bringing Grace. And I believe that every character, every story I'm telling still has to have something authentic and something deep, right? It still has yeah. to have a little bit of grace. Otherwise, it's not a real, it doesn't have that deep, deep, deep layer that is in the depth of my spirit. 
And um, and that's what I drew and that's what I brought into this character as Lisa because I do know what that feels like. I know what it feels like, you know, to be struggling in what, what you know, it's commonly said two worlds. It, it's the white world, the indigenous world, it's the city, it's the, it's your territory. It's those, it's, it's constantly that yin and that yang. And, um, and I very much know what that feels like in every aspect of my life. So it's beautiful to be able to play a character um, like Lisa that now I can express all that with a, with a different story, with a different character and with someone that, um, that Eden has created. So just, yeah, very grateful and very excited. And from, from this moment, I even had the thought of Lisa I just went, oh, I, I get it. I know it was a beautiful experience. No, that's wonderful. And again, you could tell it on screen and Lerda did such a beautiful job of bringing that out. And again, you know, just seeing the difference between a film made by indigenous director with an indigenous cast and, and then a non-native director with an indigenous cast, it's day and night. And it's it really is, it, it's, it comes out in this film and, and it's amazing. Um, let me, um, there's some questions from the audience and I'm gonna read one out. Um, what is the most important thing you would like a film a film goer to take away from this film? Film goer. Um, <laughs> well, I think, you know, it's every film I've ever made, I've always asked the people in the film, what kind of story, what kind of film do you want this to be? And every one of them have said, hopeful. I think mm. that's really crit critical. That was something that was really important. I want, I wanted, Every little indigenous girl and non-indigenous girl at the end of the film, and Grace is there when she's made her journey from the land of the dead back into the living. I mean, that's a that's a medicine person's journey. Not many people get to make that journey. That's a powerful journey. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I wanted I wanted little girls to go, hey, I want to be like her. I mm -hmm. want that's my superhero. You know, mm -hmm. I, you know, there's somebody who's real, and 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 who's you know uh, part of a around a world beyond just, you know, what sort of typifies us as Native people, you know, uh, cultures of loss, cultures of trauma. Um, I, 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 what, I was challenged because I'm, I'm dealing with intergenerational trauma, I'm dealing with rape, I'm dealing with incest, all these things, but I didn't want them to be, I didn't want to this to be, you know, what, I, I, and not that I'm against people telling the harsh realities and the social realism of our lives. I mean, that's really, really critical. But for me, I needed to make a film that was, um, was, was I don't want to say beyond that, but, but a film that would um, show our power, really, that's what it is, really, that, that we're resilient, powerful people with our own medicine, that our families are strong and full of love. We often just see our families as, you know, disintegrated, as, you know, um, basically not functioning. It's important to know that there are a lot of indigenous families that are functioning. We're hard workers, um, particularly people Kitimat. They're very hardworking people. Um, so, you know, all those kinds of things, all those sort of subtle and not so subtle things, I want people to kind of reach in and not just have this expectation of, oh, this is what an indigenous film is supposed to be. And if it's not that, then it's, you know, I don't get it. So really, really, you know, take your time. Let the beauty of the film, let the medicine of the story, you know, kind of... Um, flow through you. And one of the interesting things that's happened is um, a lot of non-Indigenous people have talked to me about how it's so helpful, it's help, been so helpful for them to deal with their own grief of loss, because mm -hmm. there's a lot about grief and loss in this film. And I think that that's, I'm not, you know, like there's always this discussion about, well, you know, people of color, Native people were there, you know, our only purpose is to sort of heal white people. Well. You know, this is about healing our own people. This is about the healing of our own people. But that doesn't mean that through story, people can't find their own healing and that they can't, mm -hmm. you know, relate to the idea of, of grief. And, you know, our spiritual belief of that we live beyond the physical, I think, is something that, you know, is resonating with people around the world and resonates with other people whose cultures also contain that truth. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is there any more questions over here on the right hand side? No. All right. So I get to keep asking the questions I want. <laughs> um, so the the film itself is, like you say, the power of indigenous women. It comes out and it's it, it's 
I mean, amazing. And, and I guess a rarity in indigenous cinema, it is getting there. But um, do you feel, I mean, as actress and as a director, do you feel that inclusivity is getting better in terms of indigenous storytelling and, and it being able to be on screen more than it was in the past? Do you feel like it's changing or do you think that it's just a slow buildup? Grace, you can go. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a big one. Um, I'll I'll keep it brief. Um, when I you know I entered the industry about ten years ago, going on a decade now since I went to acting school, and I was horrified, you know, at where we were at when it came to any kind of representation, any kind of indigenous roles, and the lack thereof. And uh, and I felt really discouraged and and questioned my my career path because of so many um really bad roles and i truly believe that the work that i'm doing the work we're doing as filmmakers and actors you know what we see on the big screen what what the mainstream sees of us that affects our lives it affects our daily lives um, as indigenous people so if we are constantly seeing people women especially indigenous women um if we are constantly seeing violence um, against them, if we're constantly seeing them as victims, then that is going to flow into our lives. And that's the idea that the rest of the world and, and North America will have about us. So the choices, the rules that I do are very important. I don't want to encourage, you know, that kind of um, those stereotypes or anything that keeps us in the past. I want to keep doing roles that keep us in the future and make us now. We are here. We are still here and celebrate that. And uh, so for years, I was, I was struggling and I, I felt very defeated. Um, and then I, I am happy to say, and I wouldn't just say this, but I genuinely am so thrilled and so happy right now, today in 2021, because the amount of roles that I've gone out for and that I will be doing in the next 12 months um, are all written by Indigenous people, being directed by Indigenous people. We are showing up. We have shows on mainstream media now. Uh, you know, we had Rutherford Falls come out uh, a couple months ago, and that is a completely, you know, indigenous uh, team in, in the writer's room uh, as actors. And, you know, and, and it keeps coming out. You know, we've had how many good hits in the last year. And I think that the audience is showing up and the audience is saying, we love this. Tell us more. We are ready to learn. And, um, and I can promise you, that the next year is going to be completely a game changer by what I'm reading, what the scripts that I'm reading, the scripts that I'm saying yes to, it's all completely indigenous led. And that is what the future is. And that's going to make the difference because we can no longer be the B plot. We can't continue being the side story. We need to be in charge of all of our own stories. And that is what is happening. And I really believe that like, these next few years is going to absolutely change everything in a really good way. I, I, I have sort of, I have two, I have two minds uh, because, you know, you know, I've been doing this for a while and, and we had so many, many obstacles and so many challenges and so many, you know, kicks to the curb. And I'm not the only one, but certainly, um, you know, it's, it, you know, we've been trying to make features for a while. Um, and it was because of the hard work of a lot of indigenous people. Back in 2005, we had a large gathering. And we called together all the big funding agencies in Canada and said, look, at, we want this transformation. That was in 2005. And I could go back further where we had similar conversation. So we had to kind of fight, 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 fight to get to where we are now. And, you know, part of me, you know, I mourn for the fact that what we could have been doing all along. And we kept doing. I, I was doing priority science. I was doing the Hewitt and you know, all this stuff. But one of the things that's really critical to me in this process is this idea of inclusivity. So in order to kind of embody that concept, I created something called the I am for lab, which is an XR, VR, AR lab um, in, in Vancouver that is like a, you know, collaboration with them with Carter University. But it's an idea of bringing us into these new technologies so that we can influence these technologies and that they can be available to everybody. So I created this model where anybody who wants to learn these technologies, anyone who creates in VR and AR can come and we can do this. And we're trying to create a virtual production studio now as well. So we'd be the first indigenous virtual production studio probably anywhere in the world. 
And I'm doing that because I do believe that even though that change is happening, there's still always that kind of um, Western co concept of who gets to tell you know the story. So there's a, always a, there's a the layer of celebrity culture, and I, I really want all the actors and everybody to be able to participate in that celebrity culture because it certainly drives people to the, to the theaters. It drives people to to you know to finance our films. But I also want to make sure that all of us, no matter who we are, I mean, you know, whether we, you know, gets to tell the story and gets to be able the tools to tell the story. And I, I, I think we're seeing that change, but I think it needs to be in a bigger way, in a bolder way. Um, and I think we need to be at the core of, uh, of storytelling in, in on Turtle Island, in Canada and North America. We, this is our land. The stories can only come from here. So we're not just talking about you know a few projects. I'm talking about a major overhaul. And I know I sound idealistic and probably you know people think oh well you know, but I, I still believe in it and I I do my best every day to try to further that and, and try to embody that in the work that I do. Um, but yeah, no, I'm excited. I, I I'm you know hopeful about optioning some new work and uh, taking those things into new directions and you know all the work that Grace is going to be doing and all the other filmmakers and all the other actors and storytellers uh, and the future VR makers and all the you know ways of telling stories so yeah I, I remain hopeful because that's always been the message. <laughs> that's, all we can, that's all we can do that's all we can do <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing all the new stuff. Absolutely. It's, it gets exciting every, every year, every year to see different things led by indigenous people from all over the world and regions. Um, I do have, there is a question. It says, um, could you each speak about working with the special effects in the film in a particular, in particular as a way to represent ancestral presence and power? Hmm. Well, that's a big challenge because that's a lot of behind the scenes stuff to get to where I could even get close to having uh, the VFX that was able to embody that. Um, but that's another story for another day. Um, certainly it's, um, it's been a challenge because the budget was low and I had to raise additional money, you know, telefilm and the broadcasters did their best to come forward to help me do that. Um, I was challenged also with the fact that in Vancouver, it's such a service industry here that the VFX companies are mostly servicing big American productions. So when an indie goes and says, look, I only have this budget. Could you work for me and do this? They're like, no, well, no, you know. Yeah. And a lot of the companies in Canada are being bought up by other bigger companies or bigger companies are coming into Canada because they're, you know, the, the workforce is, you know, very strong and we've got health care and all these things. So, um, so it's, it's a challenge, but in a very sad, tragic way, what happened was COVID happened. And a lot of the smaller companies that were doing VFX in Vancouver didn't have the contracts anymore. And so I was able to go back to one of them and say, look, at, you know, I still, this is still my budget. Do you think you could, you know, I've raised a little bit more. Do you think you could do it? So there's the practical side of it. But the other side of it is, and then there's the side, the fact that in the book itself, you know, you know, Grace has a very, I'm sorry, Eden had a very clear picture of what she wanted to do. And people told me, no, you can't do that, Loretta. That's 3, that's 3, 3D C, CGI. You don't have the budget for that. You're, what you want to do is your the budget for that one scene would be the budget for your whole film. So I think those are all things, again, when I'm talking about inclusivity, you know, our budgets have to be on that scale. The people have to be kind of considering that. And we have to be innovating technology so that we can, create the kind of the effects that we need without those huge, huge budgets. But when it came down to it, you know, um, the, the power of the water was, the fear that Lisa always had was her brother drowning. So how do I embody that? You know, water is something that is sacred. Water is something that is, we can't live without. Um, and yet there was, it's dangerous you know if you live on the ocean if you're, if you're a fisherman if you if, you know it's dangerous because the weather can change and the water can change so in a way that being isn't the water um but it's the part of the cosmos in which anything where chaos can occur and um i think that's sort of what was going on you know to some extent with that and um 
and you know, there was the practicality of it. But yeah, I mean, <sighs> I think that's that's about all I can say right now. But it was a, it was a, it was a, um, it, yeah. I, I'm happy that people react well to it. I've also had white male critics say, "Oh, they're the VFX are like really cheap. They look cheap." And it's like, you know, did they realize the challenge I went through? And yeah. oh, by the way, I was watching uh, Superman and uh, whatever that new series <laughs> is right now. And I looked at the VFX and that, and they're not that good. And I bet their budget was, you know, as big as my yeah. uh, my whole film. So, you know, it's it's funny. It, you know, I guess they don't expect an indigenous woman to be putting VFX in the film and trying to make them work with the budget that she has. I think I'm heroic for doing it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Uh, um, I think we have time for, yeah, a couple more questions. Uh, what's the, okay, we already talked about what's changed in the past 10 years. Um, the next one was how difficult was to film those scenes um, that were shot in the forest? <laughs> I have a funny story. <laughs> this goes to all my fans. <laughs> so uh, I remember it was a Friday night. It was like, you know, so our, our last day of shooting of the week. Um, so it's late, late night, you know, almost midnight. And we did this huge uh, forest scene where, you know, it was a huge lighting setup. We had fake snow, we had all the, the whole shebang um, happening. And uh, they had to trim a path for me to walk through because of safety. You know, they need to make sure that, that I'm not going to trip on something. So the whole shebang, I showed up. I was like, whoa, this is a big, you know, we had cranes and lights and this and that. And then uh, they go, oh, yeah, I'm also going to be wearing more mask for this. So I have a, I wear a wooden mask quite a bit in the, in the, the four scenes. You know, that's my power and that represents my family. And, um, and that's gifted to me um, in the film. And... Just so everyone knows, that mask didn't have eye holes. <laughs> and it was real wood. And it was so heavy. And it was, it wouldn't properly sit. Like, there was no real strap. There was one little strap. So I just had to balance, like, keep my head up a little bit and balance it on my face. And then, and then just look down to try to find my way. And I basically had to memorize the course just and do it with my eyes closed well there was even a point where i stepped over a log i remember i went okay you get this point and you see oh yeah step over it and no one knew that there wasn't holes in the mask like i was just completely on my own just like i got this i got this it was very hard it was very hard for me and i don't think i got enough credit for how every time we were done i was like get this off me i'm like i'm holding 10 pounds of wood right now and I can't see, and I don't think anyone gave me enough credit for what that <laughs> actually was. I, I did. I knew it wasn't easy. I mean, I feel bad because actually, if the budget had allowed, we really <laughs> should have had. We should have had take. We really should have had two versions. And, a lighter version. A lighter like, version. A lighter one. And, and it was. It, we should have done that. It, it's. It's. It's again. It's kind of like that's. I think if it was totally so behind. And the I scene. didn't. I didn't question it either. I just went. I'll just go with it. I'm 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 a trooper. I don't mind. I'll do anything you ask me to. Honestly, I I have very few boundaries when it comes to performing, mm -hmm. and I just went. That's. I'll just go with it. I'll roll with it, and no one would ever know <laughs> that's how difficult that was. I laugh at it now. <laughs> no, it, it was wasn't easy. It's you know <laughs> not to take away from that at all, but also you know I, I create this. I have this series called Coyote Science about Indigenous science for kids, and the, and there's a coyote who wears it like he's a furry he wears it and he there's no eyes for him either because that would have oh, cost no. me another ten thousand dollars so i challenged my 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 actors and I, I i my heartfelt gratitude my heartfelt apologies and one day i will have the budget so that will never happen so. <laughs> there will be eyes in there yeah, yeah. yeah. No. No. Um, i have another question here uh, well, I have you both live. How did you get interested in the careers you have taken and what is your driving inspiration? Um, well, that, that's like a lifetime of, uh, you know, to answer that. Um, I, you know, I have a lot of different things I've experienced over the years um, as a filmmaker that, you know, 
sometimes I thought, oh, this is it. Should I just, you know, is the world trying to tell me not to be here? But, you know, I think that it's nothing else I can do, really. There's nothing else I can do. This is what I do. I, I, I dream in film. I, you know, I, I'm always looking, you know, the best way to tell that story or you know, how, how would I convey that? How would I envision that? You know, how do I embody that? And, you know, how do I honor that? You know, and I remember taking one of my first films I ever made, um, one of the, with, uh, it was a long time, it was a documentary. I was right out of film school. And um, the one of the women in the film said, you know, this isn't about you or, or me, Loretta. She said, this is about, you know, in, in many generations, you know, her great, great, great grandkids and my, you know, will say to each other, well, oh, your, your grandma, your, you know, your ancestor worked together and told the story and honored us with this message, you know, for us in the future. So I think that's what kind of keeps me going is I think about how the stories have to live beyond us and how they, they have to uh, be a value to the people and they have to, those values have to be embodied and live, 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 continue to live. Um, and however I can contribute to that, that's what I try to do. So that's really, really amazing. I could tell you many other stories, but that's kind of, I think, you know, hopefully an inspiration of what reason why I keep going. Grace? Um, I, I truly believe that I put it in the hands of the creator. Uh, I've, I don't remember like choosing this career. I, I honestly believe it chose me. And, uh, you know, when young, when young people ask me, young, when youth ask me, should I do this? I'm interested. And I, at that moment, I go, I don't know. Like, I don't think there's a choice. You know if you have to do it. Because if you're already wondering, if you're on the fence, like, this is not an easy career path. Um, if, if there was anything else that I would do and I could do and that, want, that I wanted to, I would do that, honestly. I would do anything else. But um, I don't have that option. Like, I feel it. It's my purpose. It's my meaning. It's the reason I exist. And I really believe that the work that I do, and I knew I wanted to be an actor since the age of nine. Um, I had a TV show locally where I grew up um, at, for three years between the ages of nine and, uh, like, 11, 12. And in that moment, I said, Dad, like, let's go to Hollywood. I'm going to be a star. I'm going to be a young actor. Let's go. And my dad, being a school teacher, told me, Grace, just please grow up. Let's get make sure that you're grounded, that you have um, enough experience in your, your you know, age that you won't get lost in the system, lost in Hollywood. Um, and so for me, like, it's so hard to describe what that is. Like, it's this fire. It's this burning. It's this feeling that I need to get out that I don't feel I do in my day to day life. Like I, I can't, you just can't go around crying and being vulnerable and, and talking about spirits. And you know, you can, you can't, we, we wear armor. And I feel I've worn armor my whole life to survive. And when I act and when I take on characters and when I'm in safe spaces with directors and crew and other actors that are vulnerable, just like me, um, and they protect me and they keep me in a safe space, that's when I get to let those things out and I get to take my armor off and be vulnerable. And I think that um, I've chosen this and I, I'm in this because it helps me heal. And I, and I honestly believe I'm healing for not only myself, but my family. Oh, that's wonderful. We have time for one last question. Um, the question is, what are you both working on next? Well, you know, like I'm saying, I'm, I, I don't want to absolutely say right now because I haven't signed the option, but um, I am optioning um, a graphic novel, and mm -hmm. uh, so I'm and the subsequent follow-up to that graphic novel, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's uh, it involves all kinds of uh, it's dealing with our realities and the, 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 again, but in a way that perhaps we haven't seen before, just like a Monkey Beach. I think it's a film like people haven't seen before. So I think these graphic novels are similar, and um, really looking forward to working with this writer. Um, I also have a animated series that I've developed called Natanas and Skylar, which um, I really very proud of, and I'm hoping I can make it happen. And I am also still, you know, I'm always developing new projects. There's a lot of other things 
the background that, again, you know, I don't want to say too much until I know 100% that they're going to happen. But, um, you know, continue to work with the IM4 lab, try to you know, make that happen. I really want to move more into you know, immersive technologies as well. So there's, there's a lot going on. There's really, really a lot. So, yeah. <laughs> That's great. And Grace? Uh, you know, I was trying to um, step back a little bit and I thought maybe I've been, I've stepped behind the camera and I directed uh, my first film last fall and I've been offered a few new projects and I'm, I've been really excited about it because um, I thought that the acting, for me, I, I didn't think the roles were quite there yet. Like I mentioned earlier, I've been frustrated and I don't feel like a lot of them are quite the level of Monkey Beach or the level of this kind of character. Mm -hmm. But what, I just want to do good stuff. I just want to do powerful stuff. I want to do stuff that changes and I don't want to continue enforcing stereotypes. Um, but the industry has other plans for me. And uh, in the last two weeks, my entire life has completely changed and I've, I, I'll be leading my own series um, in the fall or I guess in yeah, a couple months. And, um, and I've got just, it's just lining up. The, the creator said, Grace, I pushed you as far as I thought you should go. And now here's a gift and here you're ready to, to now um, take on a lot more work. And so I'm, I'm just doing it both, just understanding and developing and storytelling and, and doing my best to be as, to be in service and to support our people and show up in a good way. And yeah. But I feel like this is going to be the best year yet, you know, some crazy way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. It was an honor to have both of you here. Um, this is the end of our discussion and Q&A. And I want to say thank you again, Loretta. Thank you again, Grace. And if you'll see on the bottom, there will be a link to where they could find Monkey Beach, where it will be screening. Um, so please check that out. And you could also check out the Smithsonian National Museum of American Indian. Um, our website will have screenings just like this. This is why we do it, so that you guys can see what's out there um, and to join the discussion. So thank you again. Good evening, everyone. And thank you again, Loretta and Grace. Bye, Hi. everyone. Great to meet all of you. Good to see you, Grace. It's looking so incredible. <laughs> I look forward to doing more work together, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Done.